We've seen a number of changes since the previous report. Our survey questions evolved from those in the 2021 report, given what we've been seeing in the energy transition. Some differences do stand out, such as the rise in biofuels and decline in LNG, although the decline in LNG could be a function of it already now being seen as the transition fuel of choice. One also has to factor in the pricing spike in LNG in 2022, at the time the survey was being conducted. But it's clear from the results, both in the 21 and in the 23 surveys, that there is no generally accepted one solution. Different stakeholders are looking at different options, and there's overlap between the categories in the surveys. And that is before we've even begun to look at other potential future fuels, such as nuclear. A lot has changed from what we saw in 2021. In this recent report, for example, it seems clear that cost is perceived to be less of a limiting factor to sustainability, but rather it's the, the technology that is the challenge. The report doesn't give the answer, but it may be the case that sustainability is now seen as inevitable, that will have to be paid for, rather than something optional. Of course, it could simply be that most shipping sectors were enjoying better rates at the time of the survey than in previous years. The report does focus on the E, as it did in 21, but there are some notable S and G outcomes, such as where diversity targets and board constitution are considered to far outweigh any other ESG priority. And that goes for every region surveyed, except Europe, Middle East and Asia, where it came in a very close second. Certainly the need for it is, but how to get there is still far from clear. The messaging from the industry is very much one of sustainability focus. That of itself can potentially bring unforeseen tensions. For example, in the shape of company directors needing to balance their fiduciary duties of financial stability and profitability on the one hand, with pursuing ambitious climate strategies and other ESG policies on the other. There's also a potential mismatch between those policies and contractual obligations. And one might also be looking at misalignment between ambitions and execution, leading in more extreme cases to potential liability and negligence. The industry appears to be doing the right thing, but it needs to be mindful of the way it does it.